All right, welcome back to WMAC Now with your host Chuck Stevenson coming at you tonight with a special fight review. We're going to Nagoya, Japan for Ryzen number 27. We're going to the main event, Super Atomweight Championship. Champion Ayaka Hamasaki coming in 21 and 3, taking on the challenger Kana Asakura coming in at 18 and 4. Now this was a rematch. These two first met at Ryzen 14 on January, or excuse me, December 31st, 2018, with Ayaka Hamasaki winning by armbar submission in the second round, capturing the inaugural Ryzen Super Atomweight Championship. Now she since lost the title and then regained it this past New Year's Eve when it was vacant again and is facing Kana Asakura again for the title. Um, you know, a lot of people were going into this not expecting much out of Asakura. I wasn't too much either, but uh, I think it was ended up being a lot closer than just about anybody figured it was going to be. So let's get down into the fight. Uh, first round, uh, Hamasaki's boxing, her boxing was money in the early stage. Uh, she's piecing Kana up, but then again, Asakura was, you know, landing some clean shots of her own occasionally. Um, Hamasaki got a takedown in the corner, landed some ground and pound, but Asakura was able to escape, uh, quickly slammed Ayaka, who then quickly got back up, and then from there, there was a little bit of a battle of low kicks, followed by a battle of feints, and then some more good boxing by Hamasaki to finish out the round. Second round, the one-twos were still landing for Hamasaki, but Amas Asakura, she landed a really nice, clean, hard left in there, too. Um, Hamasaki got a take down the half guard. Uh, she started to hunt for an arm lock, but that allowed Asakura to scramble and landing in uh, Hamasaki's guard. Um, both started landing some ground and strikes. Um, Hamasaki then escaped, but was eventually brought back down by Asakura. And then Asakura, she you know, worked her way to mount, got it in the last 10 seconds, started landing some punches. Um, so, you know, the way Ryzen does some scoring, I had to fight, you know, about even up after the second because Asakura was doing some good work on the ground, landing some strikes, because some good clean strikes of her own, plus the mount at the end of the round is very crucial under Ryzen's scoring because uh, they don't do... Uh, round by round scoring, but it's whole fight, but I still have it uh, roughly even. Uh, third round was a largely stand-up affair. Hamasaki's jab was still landing at will, but Asakura, she started to get the timing down on her counters and started landing some good counters herself. Um, Asakura got a takedown attempt, but was blocked by Hamasaki, um, still held on to her and brought her down on the second attempt. And from there, she landed some punches in turtle position, but um, Hamasaki got back to her feet. And then Hamasaki landed a quick takedown of her own, but um, Asakura bounced right back up. And from there, went to the judges, and it was a split decision in favor of Ayaka Hamasaki, who retained her title, defeating Kana Asakura for the second time. My opinion, I thought this fight was excellent. It wasn't the most action-packed fight. There was definitely some lulls in it, but it was very interesting from a technical standpoint. Uh, the, the, the boxing on display was very nice, very crisp, and the little bit of groundwork that there was, just the, the scrambles, the transitions were very nice to see. So not action-packed, but from a technical standpoint, this is a very interesting fight to watch. A lot of improvement from Kana Asakura uh, since their first fight, particularly her striking. You know, when they first met, Asakura was, you know, had a little bit of striking, but it was mostly just functional enough for her to get in close and get her takedown so she, that she could use her wrestling ground and pound and go for submissions. So her striking has come a long way since their first meeting, you know, at the end of 2018. Now, like I said, it, this was a close fight, a lot closer than um, I think anybody thought it would be. Now, I have seen that there is a little bit of controversy with the decision. You know, I watched some other review, like short reviews or statements on this fight. And a lot of people thought, you know, what, how did one judge see it for Kanasakura? And, you know, 
it seems like a lot of people want to make comments or do reviews on the fights without fully understanding the scoring. Rise in scoring is different than you know what we see in North America and most other promotions where they have the 10-8 rounds. Ryzen has an open fight, whole fight scoring. Um, attempts to finish, damage, um, how you look at the end of the fight, you know, who, who has the stronger end to the fight. Those things are big. Like I said earlier, that Asakura getting mount at the end of the second round and landing ground upon is huge because as far as if, if it had ended at the second round, she was ahead. Um, the damage done, Asakura was swollen, but Hamasaki's nose was bloodied up pretty good too. So damage was about even. It was a very, it was a close fight. So I personally found it for Hamasaki, but I could, I don't blame a judge giving it for uh, to Asakura either. Now for things to work on for Hamasaki, I thought she was a little bit too patient in this fight. You know, I think maybe she was learning from past mistakes like. Hamasaki tends to, you know, rush things sometimes and gets in put in some bad positions like that triangle against Sahi Ham, you know, over a year ago. Um, I think she might have been a little bit too patient in this one, but I don't blame her because she's fighting at the highest level. You can't be making those mistakes. But I think she could have tried a little bit harder, uh, particularly on the feet, to go for a knockout. For Asakura, she needs to work on her head movement bad. I mean, yes, Hamasaki has an extremely fast jab, but Asakura's head never left the center line, so it was always there to be a target for Hamasaki's jab. So Asakura really needs to get with a good boxing coach and work on her head movement. I mean, her boxing has already come a long way, but definitely needs to work on head movement. You know, work with the double-ended ball, um, work with, uh, you know, just some some light sparring or just like, even some no contact sparring, just working on that head, head movement. Now for fights to make, this is where it gets tricky for the Ryzen matchmakers, okay? Options right now are very limited as long as Japan has the travel restrictions in place requiring a two week quarantine upon arrival. Until that lets up, their options are very limited. Um, the gap between these two and the rest of the atom weights that are available in Japan, it, it's a pretty big gap. It really is. So it, they might have, pretty much are going to have to wait for some foreign um, fighters to be able to come in. Now I did pick some possible matchups for Ayaka Hamasaki. First up, the winner of the deep Adam, excuse me, Deep Jewels, Adam Wake Grand Prix. Now this is set to end in May with the winner having fought twice in one day. Now right now the winner of that is favored to be Shiyu Park. It's nowhere near guaranteed, but I think any winner of that tournament could possibly make for a, a good um, opponent. Uh, they have the storyline there, you know, champion against champion, you know, the, the smaller promotion champion versus the big promotion champion. And if Shiyu Park wins that, you know, she is Sahi Ham's, you know, friend and training partner. So you have that storyline there between, you know, Ham's buddy and Hamasaki, who's looking to avenge that loss, even if it's through, you know, the training partner. Option number two, they wait for to be able to bring foreign fighters in, and they bring in Invicta champion Alicia Zapatella. Now, I don't personally like Zapatella's chances against Hamasaki. I think she's a little too one-dimensional. Her striking needs a lot of work. Wrestling is good. She's showing some improvement with her submissions, but for the most part, she's a, she's a lot like what Kana Asakura was when Asakura faced Hamasaki the first time is how I look at Zapatella's style. But again, you got the storyline. Invicta champ versus uh, Ryzen champ. Ayaka Hamasaki, she never actually lost the Invicta title when she, that she held. She ended up leaving Invicta and coming back to Japan and fighting for Ryzen. Never actually lost that title. 
And she also holds a win over the last person to hold the title, Jin Yu Fry, who had lost the title on the scale, so she never actually lost the title in a fight either. So you always got that, you know, let the Invicta champ come over, and then Hamasaki, you know, shows her, you know, who still runs that division. And then third, and this one I just came up with, you know, right before I started the video, would be Reyna. Now this would most likely be at a catch weight because I don't think Reyna is ever going to come back down to the super atom weight 108 pound division. But both have talked about this fight and both have said that they would be willing to, you know, they're friends, but that's different when you step inside the ring. And, you know, Reyna has talked about only having like two or three fights left and this is one of the fights that she wants is to face Hamasaki. You know, if they're both willing to, to, you know, set aside their friendship and get in the ring and throw down, I think it could make for a good fight. You know, Reyna's uh, submission defense isn't exactly the greatest, but she has shown some improvement and of course her striking is top notch. So if it stays on the feet, it makes for a fire fight. If it goes to the ground, I think Hamasaki would win fairly easily, but it just depends on how much Reyna's submission defense has improved. So I think this would make for a fun fight as well. So, you know, three decent options for Ayaka Hamasaki. Okay, so those are my thoughts on the Ryzen 27 Super Atomweight Championship main event. Now, the video is available on its own on YouTube, so I will link it in the description and a pinned comment down below. Now, if you like the video, uh, let me know your thoughts on it. First off, let me know your thoughts on it. If you like it, please give it a like. Share it as well. That's how the channel grows. While you're at it, what are you waiting for? Subscribe to WMAC Now, the most complete women's mixed martial arts dedicated platform on YouTube. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.